And um, I uh, hope you leave your phone numbers with somebody so that we can call you and say, okay, what would you say on this particular bill? Because it just won't be the same. So thanks, Jeannie, for all your years of service. Well, thank you, uh, Judy. I am perfecting the phrase. That's a very good question, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> You'll still good. see me. But <laughs> <I'll> probably... <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Lonnie, did you have a comment? Yes, thank you. Um, Jeannie, I am so glad to hear this news. And for me, this is even double good news because that means that my work with you is not actually going to end. Um, I am increasing my tribal relations work with DOC, uh, so I'm sure that I will be continuing to work with you, especially when it comes to working with our Native women. So very excited for you and selfishly also excited for me. <laughs> so congratulations. Thank you, Lonnie. So uh, Krista, do we have a, a quorum? Uh, yes, we do. We have 12 members present and four absent, so we do. Thank you, Krista, I appreciate that. So let's uh, call the meeting to order and uh, thank you to the 12 members that, uh, that are here today. I appreciate that a lot. And uh, this the special meeting is to talk about um, the, the statute that governs the oversight board so there's a clear understanding. And at the last meeting, you, know, you may recall, the beginning of the meeting, um, Saranda read a statement that we'd kind of put together about the oversight board and what we viewed our role to be. And so, the, um, to, to clarify any misunderstandings. And, and I think that's important that we all get on the same page. So, and, and we spent some time with Stacia, uh, our attorney from the AG's office uh, and talking about these things. And we thought, you know, instead of having Tom or Shronda or Chris or somebody try to explain this, maybe perhaps it would be best if we had Stacia come and explain, you know, what it's about. So we're, everybody's kind of on the same page and uh, we can kind of line up and be there. I think it's important. Uh, to do that so and we've uh, you know we've been kind of experiencing a little bit of a bump in the road here that we all want to solve and keep moving down the road because uh, I don't know anybody that I see on my screen right here that isn't working hard to make the DCYF a success the, that we wanted it to be when we began so anyway I hopefully it will uh, continue on uh, Sharonda did you have anything you'd like to say I have absolutely nothing to say <laughs> let's get to business let's find out what we can and cannot do <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you, Saranda. So uh, then I'd like to introduce uh, Stacia Holler from the Attorney General's Office to take us through the, the, uh, uh, the statute over you. Stacia? Thank you, Representative Dent. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come meet with you. I um, appreciate that I've had the pleasure and privilege of working with this group from day one. Um, when you were first formed, I, I started with you right at the same time. Uh, one of the first things I would like to do, however, is, is um, introduce you briefly to uh, the individual who will be taking it over for me in representing this, this um, the oversight board as I um, prepare for my descent into retirement is kind of the way I'm looking at it and, and I'm starting to shift off some of my responsibilities. So on the screen, hopefully you'll see uh, Krista Lamson, uh, who has uh, just recently joined the Attorney General's office after many years working with uh, legal work with the city of Seattle. Um, we were thrilled to be able to hire uh, an attorney uh, in her situation with 20 plus years in public sector uh, legal work. Uh, she has already, she started uh, October 1st, she's already jumped in and helped me out with uh, uh, many matters, both for this entity and others. So today will be my last official meeting um, with this group. Uh, and um, it's been, it's just been a real pleasure to, to work with you all. So I uh, will move into and we'll start talking about uh, the authority and just kind of making sure that we're all on the same page and any questions I might be able to answer, please, please let me know as I go along. So uh, um, what I'm going to do, I, I believe this is going to work. <laughs> it's always when I try and share my screen, um, there was a document that was set out with the agenda uh, that you all um, may have seen, but I'm hoping to pull that up to kind of use it as a roadmap as we talk today uh, about the board's authority. And so um, I think I've got this right. 
can you see see the document? Oh, I get so excited when I pull this off all by myself. Um, still learning on this. So this is a summary that um, Kristen and I worked on together to, to kind of uh, have for the board. Um, it, it's hard to get too far away from the statutory language because it is what controls you are. This board is a creature of the legislature. It was formed by statute, which means that your authority comes from that enacting statute. Uh, you have, uh, as a government entity, you have those powers that are specifically laid out by the legislature and legally necessarily implied. So obviously not everything that you need to do can be um, laid out. I'm sure the legislators um, would not want to spend <laughs> their precious time laying out every detail, but the idea of is this gives the framework and then you have those powers that just kind of drive from that, but don't go beyond the borders of this. Um, so the general authorities, there's, uh, um, we list RCW 43216015 um, is your, the enacting statute, particularly sub 10 uh, has the specific uh, authorities of the board. Um, there is an additional provision in um, sub 11, which is kind of captured in, a little bit in this first um, sentence, basically the first paragraph here, which is, or excuse me, second sentence. The oversight board has general oversight over the performance and policies of DCYF and may provide advice and input to the department and the governor. So that is actually found in subsection 11 of the, of the statute, uh, but it is subsection 10 and 11 are your kind of your, where you need to go to for your authority. So you have this kind of general oversight authority and then the legislature kind of flush that out by giving more specific indication of, of the powers uh, that you have. Um, and that's what's set forth um, here in the num enumerated section below, which this is pulled largely right out of the, the statute. We've tried to slightly alter the language to make it a little bit um, more, more digestible maybe uh, than the statute itself, both for purposes of the board as well as for the board to be able to share this with uh, others, stakeholders, groups that may be wanting to learn about what the powers of the board are. So um, I'm, I'm going to go fairly quickly through these because I think there are some we probably want to talk about more. And, and in the end, I really want to make sure I'm able to adjust and address any questions you may have. Um, so I'm, we'll talk about the specifics and come back to the general a little bit more. Um, so we've talked about the, uh, that the board can receive reports um, from the uh, Office of the Family and Ch Children's Ombuds, and you know certainly we've had discussions with Patrick about that as the board has has proceeded along, and also obtain relevant records um, that OFCO uh, has in their possession. And so when you figure out relevant, what does that mean? Well, it needs to be those records that are relevant to your responsibility and authority as it relates to OFCO. There may be other duties of OFCO that are not directly related to the board, right? Those records would not be something you would be obtaining, but we're talking about here and a little bit, there's more sections talking about OFCO. So let's, let's keep going a little bit here. So subsection two is that you can request investigations by OFCO of administrative acts as defined by the statute um, and, and as a regular duty, uh, the things that OFCO routinely does. And again, um, I believe we had presentation back a couple of meetings ago where Patrick came and talked about the investigations of OFCO and what types of activities uh, his office can look in. Uh, and uh, in particular, he, he talked about as defined in the WAC that the, that office cannot go in and, and re-examine or change anything that the court has done, you know, in terms of placement or those kind of issues. They don't have that kind of authority. Therefore, um, that's not something that the board would be able to ask them to do, but it's more at a, a broader level. And we can talk more about that if, if you'd like here in a minute. Uh, you can also, and this is, you know, where obviously the board has, has actively ex exercised its authority, which is to request and receive information, data, documents, and things from DCYF. And, and the board, I don't, I 
don't believe a meeting has gone by hardly that that hasn't been what the board has been doing right to have various parts of DCYF come in and report to you and it's clearly within your authority. And then to determine whether DCYF is achieving the performance measures. Now the performance measures are specifically set out earlier in 43 to 16, right? <laughs> um, up, up above about what those performance measures are. And certainly as you have been authoring your um, annual reports uh, that I, I know is something you have looked at in terms of those uh, performance measures and, and looking to see, are they achieving them? And then sub five is, is kind of important both for what it does and what it doesn't do, I think is, is kind of the way to look at. So sub five deals with um, child care licensing, uh, child care facility licensing, excuse me, there you go. Um, and this does give the board under certain circumstances um, to look at specific licensing actions on child care um, facilities, as long as are, those do not involve uh, violation of health and safety standards. So that, that area of the licensing is kind of off the table, but other types of things. And again, I know this is an issue we've talked about off and on during time. I, I think what's significant is, is that, um, and in that case, the board does have authority to overturn, change, or uphold licensing decisions that were made by, by uh, the department. That is significant, but as I say, it's also significant for what is not there because it is specific just to that child care licensing area. There's not any specific grant as to some of the other areas, uh, uh, juvenile rehab, uh, the, the um, child placement issues, all those kinds of things. The, the board was not gr granted this kind of specific authority to go in and review those or overturn those kind of decisions. So I wanna draw that because one of the legal principles um, that allow we lawyers to make our money um, and uh, is these legal principles we're all taught in school that if, if something is specifically listed, it kind of excludes other things that are not specifically listed, right? You know, so it's kind of that type of an idea. Um, number six is to conduct annual review of department contracts to ensure they are performance-based contracts. Um, I recognize this is an issue that those of you that were involved with the formation of the department, I, I, as I understand, this was a, a major issue, this idea of performance-based contracting. And so clearly, you know, there was, you were given the authority to, to kind of follow up in that area to make sure that was being implemented and those types of contracts are being used. And then um, it's seven is actually not really so much a power. It's, it's, it's just, it has to do with confidentiality of records that you may receive. So it's, it's a little bit different. It's listed in the power section, but it's actually a little different. So kind of um, one of the issues that had as kind of, I think prompted today's conversation was, uh, I um, just wanted to make clear that the, the, the oversight that the, the um, you do have general oversight, but, but that does not extend to looking into or making recommendations to, to, to um, challenge specific like child placement decisions, foster care decisions, those, those individual cases, you don't have the specific authority to, to, to overturn or change or alter the department's decisions in those regards. And I, um, which is like I say, a little bit different than what the authority you do have in childcare licensing area. Um, that doesn't mean that you don't, that what you do have authority to do is look at systems, look at how, you know, what are, are they following their policies? Do they have the policies? Are, there, are they meeting their performance goals? You, you can look at those that, in, and you can gather that information that you're hearing from people about situations and use that information to de decide, again, at a systems level, what kind of areas are you interested in seeking more information from the department on, uh, commenting on, to the legislature and the governor and the department, those kind of things. And so that's um, that was just a distinction I thought was really important for the board to understand because I think what's crucial is not giving um, the public, uh, not creating expectations of what you they may think you can do that you really lack the authority to do. 
uh, was kind of, and I've had this discussion previously um, with a representative Dent and um, co-chair uh, Shonda on to just to make that kind of distinction. So that, that was, those were kind of the main points I wanted to make sure I got across. And kind of coupled with that um, is the, also the idea that if there's already ongoing litigation on an existing area, and this is advice I give all my clients, right? You know, you've got to be very careful about not wandering into the middle of existing litigation. Uh, you don't want to end up a party somehow to it that inadvertently, right? By, by, um, but also those, those systems are already set up to resolve those issues and they need to be followed and respected and allowed to go to completion. Again, doesn't mean you can't gather information about what is going on in litigation or other things, but you, you, you just want to make sure you're not inadvertently stepping into the middle of it. Um, whether those be specific child care decisions or more global um, litigation that may be facing the department. So that's my general overview uh, of your authority. And I would be glad to um, address any questions. And um, so Representative Dan, I'll turn it back to you. And Thank you, Stacey. That was a very, very uh, interesting, very complete. I appreciate uh, all you've done to help us with that. So it looks like uh, Ruth Kegi has a question. Ruth? Thank you, Representative Dent, and, and thank you, Stacia. Um, and it, it, when we were originally setting this up, uh, we also, the, the fact that OFCO exists and uh, is there to look into individual cases. I mean, they, uh, that's, that's really how it works, that OFCO has responsibility for looking into individual cases and the oversight board has responsibility for more looking at uh, overall departmental performance. But there's one section, um, the section 13, uh, that deals with uh, uh, the oversight board having responsibility for for meeting with stakeholders twice a year. And we also are supposed to look at surveys. And that's the broader issue of trying to get at how is the department making the kind of, uh, we called it culture change, which is a very abstract term, but is it changing the way it's relating to its contractors and to the public and to foster parents uh, and to children. Uh, and so those, those two specific things are not included in this overview, but I think they're really important of, of stakeholder meetings and reviewing surveys. If I might, uh, I, excellent point. We can certainly incorporate those. Um, and, and it's great, great catch. I think I was focused a little bit more on kind of the, the the, the one specific area, but thank you for bringing that to our attention. I'll work with Krista to make sure we get that incorporated. Cause the idea was that this was a document that you could use, you know, you could share and I want to make sure it is complete. So thank you. There's in all honesty, nothing more frightening than um, discussing a, a statute in front of the people that authored it. Um, <laughs> Uh, so um, I've been doing this for a long time, and I tell you, this is this is a little nerve wracking here. So, um, so thank you for that. I, I, I appreciate that very much. Thank you, Ruth. That was a good catch. Appreciate that. Do we have any other questions, comments, uh, concerns? Um, Diane Levy, Dr. Levy. Uh, yes. Thanks. So. Um... I'm trying to make sure I understand this quite plainly. So we had the situation arise where, for example, an individual family member wanted to speak to me about something that had come up in one of the, the meetings. And it was okay that I spoke with her. I cleared it with Krista, but you're, we need to be just really explicit with them. And then in this case, it wasn't an issue because her case had already been decided through the courts. There was nothing to do with the specific case, but just being really explicit that this is a systems level that we're looking at things, not on an individual case basis. But we can talk to people if they request to talk to us, correct? C correct. And I, I, again, it's it's a little bit of expectation management, you know, that, that um, 
Absolutely. You, you, the, the board has the ability and the authority and the duty to gather information, you know, on things, but you, you just want to make sure that you're not setting an expectation by individuals that you're going to be able, the board can go in and change a decision that was made in, in that context. And I, um, I'm not saying that was happening, but I, 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 there were a few times in some of the, the testimony um, where I was just a little concerned that, that, that people might be getting that, that um, feeling. And I just thought it was really important that we have a discussion about it. Uh, th thank you, uh, Sydney Forrester. Thanks, Representative Dent. Hi, Stacia. It's a long time since we've talked. Uh, it's good to see you, even if it's on Zoom. Um, I wanted to just ask, uh, this happened at the very sort of tail end of last legislative session, but there was a bill that um, added to the duties of the board without uh, appropriately amending the board statute. And so I just wanted to know if you're aware of it and if you would want to comment on it. And, and when you made the statement that you were preparing, you know, that this document for the board uh, to reflect on, I wanted to draw this to your attention. So it's in second substitute Senate Bill 5331. It was the bill that established the safe babies court team standards. And it's section two, section sub, section two sub two l um just that you might want to look at that i don't know if i don't know if that particular provision in this bill came about uh with a lot of deliberation and i know that there is some discussion as to whether there might be a, a better role for that function in the courts um but but anyway, I just since it is a statutory uh, power <laughs> duty uh, of the board, I wanted to make sure you knew about that. I appreciate that. I at one point have a vague recollection of that. It's in um, if I could repeat, so make sure that I've got the right citation to go back and double check again. But did you say it was um, 5331 was the bill number? Was that correct? Yes. yes. OK. Uh, and it was from the 2000 and this session 21. or the 21? 21. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. And um, I that may have that may not be the one I'm thinking of. So I will definitely go take another look at that. I was focusing on this statute. So if it didn't reference, I know. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sydney. Um, Lonnie, you had your hand up. Did it come down? I'm missing you on I my screen. Oh, there yeah, you are. I took it down because I think I'm my question is probably needs to be saved for later. I was already thinking about next steps and I think that's not right now. <laughs> okay, thank you, Lonnie. Thank you. Katie? Thank you, Representative Dent. Um, Stacia, I was just wondering from a legal perspective, what language, um, being as we can't, we don't know ahead of time who's coming for public comment or what they're going to say, what language should we as a board use when responding to, for example, someone who's coming to tell us about an individual case? Right. So that was one of the things we were we were starting to address in the statement that was uh, uh, we had at the last meeting of, about cases. Um, I think the two things that I, I would, uh, and we can certainly provide talking points um, in, in a, you know, follow up from this meeting in, in a way that is, is easy for y'all to, to have access to. Um, but I guess the two things that really come to my mind are just it, it, making sure that individuals are clear that the board does not have authority to direct the department to go back in and make any changes to the, any decisions in a particular case. Now, part of that is a lot of times the cases have been gone up through the court system as well. And so you've got court decisions, right? And, and, and an administrative body can't make a change to a court decision in that setting. So that's part of it. The other, the other issue, this is a little bit different, a little bit to the side, Katie, but I still think it's really important is um, making sure that people understand that if they're going to come talk to the board, it's an open public meeting that anyone, it's, they're recorded, you know, anybody can listen to. 
And um, I just, you know, I, I would really want folks to understand that, that it, it, to the extent they're going to talk about what may be very private matters, um, I, I just don't want them to be caught off guard that when they then find out, you know, King Five is there, a bunch of other people there, it's on, it's, it's on TV, W's website, you know, those kind of things. And so that's, that's more of a procedural type thing. But that, those are kind of the two main points. But we could certainly, I'd be glad, um, I, and, and of course, this is where I fall to Kristen, because she's taking over for me. <laughs> I've been having so much fun doing this. Um, uh, uh, Kristen, and I can work with, with Krista to, to develop something that gives you a little more talking points, if that would be helpful. That would be very helpful. Okay. Um, even great. I, I don't know if this is possible. It's something we could read just at the beginning of open public comment so right. that individuals aren't disclosing a whole bunch of information, not realizing this is a very public forum. Right. And we, we, we have uh, had a version of that last thing, but we can definitely make sure that that's, that's, that's there. So thank you for that suggestion. And we'll, we'll be glad to work with, with Krista and co-chairs on that. Oh, thank you, Katie. And, and we did read that statement at the last meeting too. And it was, it was kind of, uh, we discussed it with our with our other meeting. So it's a good idea. And people sometimes think it's just a handful of folks on the screen, but it's uh, there's several people always listening. So Lonnie, I see Can your hand. Can I suggest? Oh, sure, go ahead. Just to follow up on that subject. Can I suggest that that statement actually go out to the board? I know that myself and Representative Dent got that, but I think that would be great for them to know exactly what that says. Absolutely. Good, good, good call, Sharonda. Lonnie, your hands up again. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know what, Katie and I are on the same wavelength here. I, I was wondering if this maybe have the statement in two areas. Should we have it on our website? Um, and then another one. Um, I, obviously, I wasn't at the last meeting, so I didn't hear the statement. But I'm wondering, is this something that we need to say on a monthly basis whenever we have a meeting like we always start public comment with this statement so that everyone's on in the public side is reminded i don't know just an idea i was yeah. wondering about no no i think that's an, that was our plan and i think it's an excellent idea that people because we're going to have different people at every meeting that comment and it's also a good reminder and also uh you know a version of what we've uh of what uh, stacia presented here uh we're going to put on our website. So, uh, and we'll put that statement on the website as well. So we just want to keep people informed about, you know, what, what this is and what it isn't. And uh, if they say something on here that uh, anybody could hear it. So uh, Lois, you have your hand up. Yes, I do. Um, thank you, Representative Dent. On, um, I, I think it'd be a good idea to share the statement, um, but is it possible to have it up during the public comment time and then maybe the refer to it, it can be referred to without um, maybe read at the beginning of the meeting, then have it up and just say, you know, please review the statement um, and go from there. The only reason I say that is because if you say it before people speak, um, it may be off putting for them and may come across that. Um, we are not as much interested in their, or, or, I mean, we know it's a disclaimer, but do we want people to feel like we're washing our hands of different situations or comments from the beginning? I, I, I don't think we want to, you know, push people away. I probably, I'm, I don't know if I'm being clear and how I'm trying to share my thoughts but maybe putting it up on, on the screen so folk can see it. And then the other thing too is um, for the group to possibly consider having a longer period for public comment. Um, we seem to have a lot more folk interested in what the oversight, the work of the oversight board. So just sometimes people just need a place to be able to share. And I think that that, we should be open to that. Um, thank you, Lois. That's a great idea. I, I appreciate that. And uh, I, I, I understand where you're coming from on that. It's, uh, you know, we're trying to let people know that what they say can be heard by anyone. And uh, so maybe uh, limit anything that's private or confidential. 
but uh, I can see how that could be taken wrong. So we'll, uh, I don't know how much we can put up on the screen or not. That I guess would be up to Nicholas. He's the smart guy that does this uh, technical stuff. So uh, we'll have to discuss that with him and then with Kristen, see uh, what we could put together and how it looks. Uh, if, if that would work for you, I think that would be, uh, and Krista, what, what is your views on that? Is that something we might be able to do? Yeah, it's something we might be able to do. I do want to ask Stacia, though, as far as the OPMA, if there's anything that's on the screen because people can join by phone, we do have to read anything on text out loud anyways to be in compliance with OPMA. Is that correct? You're on, you're on mute, Stacia, sorry. Oh man, I thought I was going to get through my last meeting without the having to ha anybody having to tell me. But um, um, I, yeah, I, I agree, Chris. As that is part of the problem or part of the 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 issue that comes up with with Zoom meetings is you may have individuals who are calling in only by phone and not are not linked by video, and so they're not going to be able to see it. Um, that said, you know, we can certainly talk about some ways to, to address Lois's concerns and, and still make sure, um, I, I understand where Lois is coming from and, and we can try and be creative in, but you, you, you are correct that that's, that's why the chat is such a problem, right? That why we, we don't want people using the chat feature during a meeting because the public can't see what's being said in there. One, I think it's, it, it can create a record that you may not want created, <laughs> um, but also um, you don't want them, people not being able to see all the, the comment that's being made, right? You want everybody on the same footing, so. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you everyone. I just, I'm sure between um, the leader, the executive team can come up with the way working with Stacia to be able to to be able to tackle that. So I appreciate it, thank you. We have any, any other questions, comments? Um, Senator Warnick, you're, uh, you're disappointing me. You haven't come up with something really good. Sorry about that. I've been on a tour all morning and so I'm thinking total different thoughts than what we're doing now, so. Um, don't have anything to add at this point. I'm taking notes, though. Thank you. Appreciate you. Any other any other comments? Um, well, thank you everybody for for coming in, and we'll go ahead and uh, take uh, uh, the suggestions and comments we've heard and incorporate them in and, and put together uh, uh, what we view as the uh, the, the guidelines. Um, for the oversight committee and also, you know, some of the other things that have been brought up about uh, maybe could improve, uh, uh, you know, how we handle things and how we communicate with the general public and with each other. So I appreciate that. You know, I'd like to take a minute when we're all here because we began the meeting and I'm not sure who all was on the meeting, but, you know, I'd, li I'd like to again, thank Senator Jeannie Darnell for her years of service in the, in the legislature and for her passion for children. She's uh, definitely has that passion. And I've had many, as I stated earlier, I had many conversations with her around uh, around the children's issues and her passion and my passion. And uh, uh, we've, um, you know, we're two really different people that have actually worked together, I think relatively well to find, uh, to make better legislation for, for our children. So I think that's uh, really important. And I think that's what the legislature is about. So Senator, thank you again for your years of service and all that you've done. So, um, Saranda, do you have any closing comments? Not a one. Goodbye. Not a one. <laughs> the, the lady of few words today. Uh, uh, Dr. Liebby, you have your hand up? No? Okay. And, that was uh, just clapping. Oh, you were clapping. Okay. Well, sounds good. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. For I think Senator Warnick might have put her hand back up. Did you, Senator? Did no. You got her hand up there. I just okay. also, I just also want to thank Stacia Haller so much for the tremendous support that you've given the oversight board over a long period of time and really kept us on the right track. So thank you and wishing you well in your retirement. Thank you. I, I it has been, an, uh, it really has been a pleasure and an honor. Um, the work you're doing is something that's very um, dear to my heart as well. 
And so it's it's been great to work with you. You've made a very wise decision in hiring your executive director, I believe. And it's been an incredible pleasure to work with Krista. I, she's one of the uh, sharpest, best. Uh, I, I've got amazing clients all across the board, but she, she's really a uh, very special one. And I do appreciate I, my I'm actually not retiring until the end of January, so I'll still be around, but I um, to help out in the transition. Wow. But um, Thank you. And um, I, I applaud you all for your commitment. And it's, it's great to know that it's folks like you out there. So thank you very much. And, and thank you, Stacia, for I, I really appreciate that when we had questions and you were readily available at, at a moment's notice and have helped us through this. Uh, we've had some challenges here in the last few months and I appreciate all your help and, and your guidance and your wisdom. It's been so important uh, to help this be a success. So. Anyone else? Are we good? Okay. Well, thank you all for being here. And uh, we're having a meeting, I believe it's next Thursday. Is that correct, Krista? Nodding her head. That's right. So we'll look forward to seeing everyone there next Thursday. And uh, until then, have, have a good time and uh, we'll see you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody.